Okay, let's look at the third example. Okay, so the exa third example could we repeat the same process all over again. The first thing that is you need to find your f x, the first order of partial derivative, treat y as constant. So in here we have 6x squared and okay, uh, y as constant. So we have 6y squared. This one is 0. And we have um, minus 150 in here. Okay, the next is we find fy. So treat this one as constant. So you have 0, and x as constant, differentiate y, so you have 12xy. Okay, um, differentiate this, you have minus 9y squared, and this one is constant, so you have 0 here. Okay, so next step is that your fx equal to 0. So you have 0 equal to 6x squared plus 6y squared minus 150. Okay, basically this one you can factor out the 6 from here. So we have x squared plus y squared minus 25. Okay, and then basically 6 could not equal to 0. So we can have x squared plus y squared minus 25 equal to 0. Okay, your 6 is impossible to have to equal to 0. Okay, now this one rearrange it so you have uh, x squared plus y squared equal to 25 for this one. We arrange it. So we have the first equation. Okay, for second equation that is obtained from here, so you have to let your fy equal to 0. So we have 0 equal to 12xy minus 9y squared. Again, we're going to do the factorization. So if you factor out 3y from here, so we have 4x. Okay, factor out 3 from here, so we have 3y. Alright, so answer the first you have 3y equal to 0, y is actually 0, and the second you will have 4x minus 3y equal to 0, and this actually gives you y is actually. 4x over with 3. Alright, once we have that y value, I'm going to do the substitution one more time, okay? So now, substitute your first y. So substitute your y equal to 0 into your number 1. So in here, you have x squared plus 0. Square equal to 25. That is basically x squared equal to 25 and x, you have to square root it. So you have plus minus 5. So it means that you will have two critical points. The first critical point is positive 5 with y is 0. The second critical point is x is minus 5, y is 0. So you have two critical points here. Okay, how about the second one? We have the first one here. We already did with the substitution. Look at this one. So we substitute your y equal to 4x over 3 into your number 1. So we're going to substitute here. So we have x squared plus the y here. You have to change to this. So we have 4 over 3x square equal to 25. Okay, let's simplify it. Alright, if we simplify this one, so basically I'll have 16 over 9x square 25. Okay, uh, plus it, so you will have uh, 25 over 9x square equal to 25. And then, okay, bring this one over. So we have this. And then we have x squared equals to 9. And x is actually equal to plus minus 3. Okay, this is means what? This means that you have two critical points or so. But uh, we do not stop here. We know that we have two critical points. Because now, again, okay, uh, you have to continue to find your y because your y is actually not a value. Your y is actually an equation. So now use the first information that you have here. So you sub your x is positive 
3 into into y into here so we have y equal to 4 x is 3 multiplied by 3 or uh, divided by 3 so we have 4 so we got the first critical point for this case that is 3 4 and then we have negative 3 so sub your x as negative 3 negative 3 into this one again so you have y equal to 4 over 3 multiplied by your x is minus 3 so we have minus 4 so now our second critical point for this case so we have negative 3 negative 4 so just now uh, the previous case we already have two critical points and in this case we have another two critical points total up we have four critical points okay so let's just write out the critical point that we obtain from these two cases okay so the first okay uh, let me write it here so we have critical point so we have four the first is five zero five zero the second is minus five zero and the third is three four and minus three minus four so total up we have four critical points for this example okay so let me push it up okay so what is the next step after you have found the critical point Okay, if you still remember, the next step that is we require to find the second order of partial derivative. Okay, so the second order of partial derivative that is require the information from the first first order. Okay, let's just back to the first order first. Okay, let's look at the first order. So this is the first order. Okay. I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so I'm going to look for the second order. The second order, that is f, x, x. So treat y as constant. So this is 12x, constant 0, constant 0. And I look for f, y, y. So x as constant. So x as constant, differentiate this, we have 12x. Okay, differentiate y, so we have minus 18y. Okay, and then, okay, look for the fxy. fxy, that is using the information from fx. Okay, fx, okay, and differentiate with respect to y, we will expect to y, treat x as constant. So this one is constant, you have 0, and you differentiate this one, so you have 12y. And this is actually 0. Alright, okay. So now, you're going to form the discriminant equation, the d equation, using this formula. F x x multiplied with f y y minus v f x y squared. So let's just do the substitution. Okay, we have, this is 12x. Multiply with 12x minus 18y minus the 12y and square. Okay, let's just expand this one. So if you expand this one, we have 1, 4, 4, x square. And expand this one, it's basically give you minus 20, minus 216xy and it's 1, 4, 4, y square. Now that is the time to build your table. So the table should begin the first column that is critical point. So now we have four critical points, right? Okay, so we have five zero minus five zero three four and negative three negative four. Okay, the second column that is D value. Okay, D value. Okay, and then the third column will be your F X X. Your F X X so is this one, so it's uh, 12 X. Okay, and then we go for conclusion. Okay. 
Okay, so you are talking about the value that is getting from you do the substitution of the uh, coordinates into the d equation. So for this case, your x is 5, your y is 0. So sub it here, x is 5, x is 5, y is 0. Y is 0. So what do you get? You would have uh, 1, 4, 4, 5 square minus 2, 1, 6, 5 square. Multiply with 0, minus 1, 4, 4, 0 square. And what is the result? So the result is actually 3,600. Okay? The same thing happened to here. You could do the substitution in here. You have x as minus 5. You have x as minus 5. x as minus 5 in here. So at the end, you will have the result of um, 3,600 also. Okay? And then, okay, um, let's just look at this 3, 4. So 3, 4 means that you substitute, you substitute the x as 3, the y as 4 into here. So you will have 1, 4, 4, 3 square minus 2, 1, 6, 3 multiplied with y is 4 minus with 1, 4, 4, y. 1, 4, 4, the y here is 4 squared, okay? And then this is actually give you minus 3,600, okay? And happens to, same thing happens to minus 3, minus 4, so you have minus 3, minus 3, minus 4, minus 4 here, and now you have negative 3,600, okay? So once you have done with the d value, okay? So go back to our project. The project say what? The project says that when you have the d value greater than zero, you have to check the f x x value. Okay, so from the first two uh, critical points, you have to check. So this one is greater than zero, and this is coming from greater than zero. You have to check this. Okay, so we have to check this. Let's look at our x value. So our x value, we have to substitute here. So if you substitute here, so you have 12 multiplied with 5. And you have a positive 60. Positive 60 that is greater than 0. Okay? And if you sum the x as minus 5 into here, x as minus 5, okay? So you have negative 60. Negative 60 is less than 0. Okay, let's just look back on the flow chart one more time. So it says that greater than 0, greater minimum, and otherwise. Okay? So greater than 0. Greater than zero minimum, so relative minimum, <coughs> and this one is relative maximum. All right, okay. And how about this? Okay, so we have negative three thousand six hundred. So your d value is less than zero. So if it's less than zero, you do not have to do this too. So directly, you can make a conclusion. Then they are set the point. So in here, this is less than zero. You do not have to make conclusion. This is set a point. And same thing is less than zero. You do not have to check this. So this is a set of point. Okay, so done for this example.